thanks for watching and see you, since you like the half derivative so much, I thought I should give you another little special. And namely, it turns out that half derivatives, you can also define them via the Fourier transform. And in fact, I, in a lot of PDE papers I've seen, they use that definition of the Fourier transform, of the half derivative. And I just have to say though, it's kind of hard with that definition to do examples, so I won't do any examples, but I think it's more useful in theory. So it's still a good definition. And pretty natural, I would say too. So maybe those who like applications, they see the applications part of it better. So let me remind you, what is the Fourier transform? And I don't know anything about the Fourier transform, so this is the first time we're seeing it, okay? Well, that's not true, but imagine it's true. Okay, uh, so what is the Fourier transform? F hat of xi equals to simply this very strange integral, integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x e to the minus 2 pi i x xi dx. So you're taking this function f, you're multiplying it by this very circular thing, and you're integrating it with respect to x. And the only time this xi appears is here. And now let me give you some motivation for the formula I'll put, which again, super natural. So motivation. I mean, super natural as in it's very natural, not like as in paranormal or anything. So motivation. What is the Fourier transform of F prime? Maybe you know it. If you don't, let me quickly derive it. It's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f prime of x e to the minus 2 pi i x xi dx. And of course, you see f prime makes you want to integrate by parts. In fact, let's do that. So if you integrate by parts, and assume there are no terms at infinity, and you can do that if you assume that f has compact support, so it's zero outside some set. So that's fine. And so it's from minus infinity to infinity of um, f of x, I guess, minus integral of minus infinity to infinity f of x, and you differentiate this with respect to x, so you get a minus 2 pi i xi e to the minus 2 pi i x xi dx. And the nice thing is this thing doesn't depend on x, so it comes out. And you're left with 2 pi i xi integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x e to the minus 2 pi i x xi dx. But this is nothing else than the Fourier transform of f. So 2 pi i xi f hat of xi. So in other words, the Fourier transform of the derivative, if you take f prime of, if you take the Fourier transform of f prime of xi, that just becomes 2 pi i xi f hat. So that's why Fourier transforms are very nice. They turn differentiation into multiplication. And therefore, they turn you know, ODEs or PDEs into uh, you know, just a polynomial equation. Except if you're like me and you study nonlinear PDEs, then it's crazy. It, turns multiplication to convolution, and we don't want that. Okay. So why is that important? First of all, notice there's no minus signs because you have two minuses that cancel out. And in fact, you can do the same spiel, and you get, for example, that the Fourier transform of the second derivative equals to 2 pi i xi squared of f hat of xi. And in fact, this motivates, 
the definition of the fractional derivative, you may guess, and as I said, that's how people define a fractional derivative in papers. You might guess that, in fact, if you take the Fourier transform of the fractional derivative, you just get 2 pi i xi to the alpha f hat of xi. So in other words, what is the alpha derivative of f? It's just the function whose Fourier transform is 2 pi i xi to the alpha f of xi. So definition, as I said, uh, the alpha f is the function g g uh, which satisfies g hat of xi equals to 2 pi i xi to the alpha f hat of xi. In other words, if you want to take, you know, I mean, not in other words, in addition, since, you know, it's given that the Fourier transform is, you know, invertible, you can simply say that uh, d alpha f is the inverse Fourier transform of 2 pi i xi to the alpha f hat of xi inverse Fourier transform, so reverse hat. And as I said, it's hard to do examples with that because it's pretty hard to calculate Fourier transforms. And not always, but what makes it hard is that you have a Fourier transform, which you might calculate, but then you have to take some inverse Fourier transform of a polynomial times a function. So it's pretty hard, but this definition is actually great in theory and in fact, let me show you that with this definition, uh, you actually have, um, it does satisfy, for example, that the half derivative of the half derivative is the derivative. So here's an application. And again, you know, uh, what, how is the half derivative defined in this case? The function whose Fourier transform is 2 pi i xi to the 1 half f hat of xi. And again, as I said, you can interpret this maybe in terms of signal. You can get a square root signal from there. But let me actually show you that the half derivative of the half derivative gives you the derivative. Well, the question is, what is d of 1 half of d of 1 half f? And since, you know, this definition is just defined via the Fourier transform, let's just take the Fourier transform of that. So let's take a big hat of d 1 half of d 1 half f of xi. Again, because you're taking this first, d1 half, there's a 2 pi i xi that comes out. So 2 pi i xi to the 1 half of the Fourier transform of this, d1 half f hat of xi. And again, uh, by the definition again, you get another 2 pi i xi of 1 half that comes out. one half of f hat of xi. That's good, you know, one half plus one half, that's one. So, I think I'm on a good track. So that equals to two pi i xi of f hat of xi. And if you remember what I said at the beginning, in fact, this can be written as a Fourier transform that's nothing else than the Fourier transform of f prime. So what do we have? We have d1 half, d1 half of f. If you take the Fourier transform of that, that equals to the Fourier transform of f prime. 
And one thing you need to know about Fourier transforms is that it's one-to-one. -one. In other words, if two functions have the same Fourier transform, they must be the same function. So if this hat equals to this hat, then this equals to this, and we indeed get that with this definition, the half derivative of the half derivative of f is the actual derivative of f. So it is pretty neat, and I think it illustrates how to actually use the definition. You never use it with the inverse Fourier transform. You usually just use it with that algebraic formula. Yes, and if you like this little excursion and you don't want to see more half derivatives, I have a huge playlist now on that, and just make sure to subscribe to my channel because I know you want to. All right, thanks so much.